just a robot. So because I did a video on Lily Pete last week, I'm going to do a video on Movie Bob this week. If you want to know why, it's because Lily Pete took a lot of inspiration from Movie Bob. And I think he's one of the main reasons for her ending up the way she did. But I also just finished playing Cuphead, and I really want to do a video about it. If only Movie Bob did a video about Cuphead so I can cover it... Well, it looks like it's time to roll the dice. I used to First, I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. So the YouTuber we're covering, Movie Bob, is a very uh, husky individual who talks about comic books, video games, movies, and other stuff. And I used to have a lot of respect for the guy. However, during the whole Gamergate thing, he totally joined the gaming journalist. And I do have two huge videos I'm planning to do about it. But I'll get to that when I do. Think of this video as just an appetizer for what's to come. The game he's talking about is Cuphead. It's one of those really popular indie games like Five Nights at Freddy's, Bendy and the Ink Machine, and Undertale. But unlike those games, I actually played Cuphead and I rather enjoyed it. I have beaten the game, granted I died 242 times, and right now I'm playing through the game again on Expert Mode. But enough exposition, let's take a look at his video. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> Movie Bob Illuminati confirmed. Hold on a second, that's not the Illuminati. <laughs> The controversy isn't actually about Cuphead. Everyone is still pretty much on board with Cuphead looking like a potentially really good game, and the early word is still pretty solid. What happened was that a games journalist posted a funny video of himself playing the game at Gamescom in Germany, and kinda sucking at it. Okay, first of all, he wasn't kind of sucking, he was absolutely terrible. And second, it was funny in the sense that he was terrible at the game. People weren't laughing with him, they were laughing at him. That's not something you want to brag to all your friends about. Also, I love that you don't actually show the gameplay footage. Context? What's that? It's a funny little thing, isn't it? But don't worry, Bob, I have the clip right here. Swipe it? Like this. 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 Well, are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? Yes. Really? No! Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? No, we are not! Are we there yet? No! no. Kind of a non-story, really. But then some guy with a buttload of social media followers and apparently a surplus of whatever gamer culture credibility means in 2017. Probably nothing good, I assure you. By nothing good, I'm sure you mean people who don't share your political views. Also, I love how he refers to his opposition. Some guy. Not naming names, because if he did that, we would know who the person is and we could hear their side of the story made an edit from only all the worst gameplay mistakes from the original video and posted it to make some kind of point about games journalism that I honestly don't grasp the full intent behind. Only the worst gameplay mistakes? Well, you could counteract this by showing the good parts of the video, but you don't do that because context is of the devil. And the point about games journalism is that they hire journalists who don't know how to play the thing they're talking about. Honestly, it looked like he never played a video game in his life. 
Well, I imagine the point was that being bad at a game is proof that games journalists and the elite mainstream media don't know enough about their own medium and therefore don't deserve as much credibility as the true devoted gaming voices of the populist new media. Honestly, you were pretty close. But it's not that gaming journalists have to be good at video games, it's that they have to be okay or somewhat competent at video games. I mean, even a four-year-old can tell you that this is bad. What do you think you should do to get over that pillar? Jump and down, then, then jump and dash and get down. Yeah? Yeah. You think that's what you should do? Yeah. You're absolutely right. How is this going? Good. Which refers to who? Mostly guys shrieking ironically racist obscenities at PUBG and pretending to be frightened by what's basically the Tim and Eric version of Night Trap. <sighs> Bob, you were so close to the right answer, and then you say this. Bob, most people want gaming journalists to be like Angry Joe or other video game reviewers. The majority of people aren't asking for PewDiePie or Markiplier. I'm sure you can find a few who do, but PewDiePie and Markiplier are insanely popular. Of course you're going to get a few people asking for them. Ah, and the writer of this was a 25-year veteran of technology journalism, almost as long as that covering games as well, right? I believe that was the case, yeah. And he doesn't know enough about video games? That would seem to be the insinuation. Ding, ding, ding! What do we have for Johnny? Yes, Bob. He has 25 years of gaming experience, yet he can't even jump over a box. Which, might I remind you, a child could point out was terrible. And that's not even close to the only thing he got wrong about video games that basically everybody knows about. In the article, Dean gets a lot of extremely fundamental, basic, and what I thought would be impossible to miss details about the game just entirely wrong. He says, then when you're shooting at a target, an orange box appears as the one and only place on that target where you can actually hit them with a mass bullet. In Mass Effect 1, during combat, sometimes orange targeting boxes would appear on enemies as you targeted them. They're really triangles, but whatever. You could see one here on a Geth Trooper. Dean wrote a review for this game, thinking that if you didn't hit inside of this triangle, you did not do any damage to the target. That clip was from Rag's Cuphead video. He goes into much greater detail about this, so I highly recommend you go check it out. Also, Bob, just because someone has years of experience, it doesn't mean they're above criticism. For example, I'm pretty sure you hate George W. Bush, but you can't criticize him because he has years of government experience. You see how that sounds, Bob? Just because X has Y amount of experience, it doesn't mean X can't be criticized by Z. Because he wasn't good at playing the tutorial of a game that not only he's never played, but that most people haven't played because it's not even out yet? He never played before? It was a tutorial! Most gamers complain that tutorials are always holding your hand. And there were words on the screen for him to read if he got lost. Also, who cares if barely any people played the game until now? I haven't played a 2D side-scroller shooter since Contra. Do you know how many tries it took me to get over that? Two! There's hundreds of different types of video games, not everyone's good at all of them, and almost no one is good at any of them the first time. This is just such a stupid thing to decide to treat as a big deal. Though, to be fair, internet geek culture tends to think everything is a big deal, except, you know, things that are actually a big deal. <laughs> oh god, the Russian hack, really? Uh, I'll do a video about the Russian hack thing another time, but it's just so ridiculous. Do you also believe that there's weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? <laughs> Just asking. But Bob, you are right about something. Not everybody is good at video games, especially when they play a video game they've never played before. However, we're not talking about just anyone, we're talking about a guy with 25 years of experience. In any case, the whole thing went viral in part because instead of treating this manufactured faux outrage as excuse for cyberbullying with the you're all being dumb, piss off and welcome to my mute button that it deserves, I wouldn't expect anything less from you, Bob. Some folks actually tried to have a good faith discussion over the make-believe serious questions supposedly at the heart of it. Do you have to be good at video games to be a good games journalist? Okay, so playing devil's advocate, do you think there's at least some merit? No. 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 Just... No. 
Game playing and writing competency are not interchangeable skill sets, and you don't need to be a master at something or even particularly good at it in order to cover it from a reporting perspective. While that is true, Bob, we do expect a very basic level of competency. He has written about things that were blatantly wrong. Okay, but... And even in this specific case, it's not like the guy said, I can't play this, which means it's badly designed and called it his review. This was literally posted under the pretext of laugh at me being bad at this game. This really shows your lack of research. You do know titles can be changed, right? It didn't used to say, look at me sucking at Cuphead. It used to say, Cuphead demo at Gamescom, it ain't easy. And I know this works because it happened to me. When I did my second video on Comic Zone, I titled the video, Comic Zones Does Not Understand Just a Robot. But originally I messed up on the title and said, Comic Zones DOES understand just a robot. But before I could fix it, Omegon and Red Robot tweeted it out, because they're fucking assholes. Okay, but what if he had been doing a preview or a review? Well, it's pretty safe to assume it wouldn't have been presented in exactly that way, because the journal in question is a veteran professional and an adult. Yeah, he's an adult, yet a four-year-old is better than him. That's pretty sad. But otherwise, I'm so much more concerned with their sentence structure and command of narrative grammar and their honesty than whether or not they can no death DMC3 on heaven or hell. Wow. There's moving the goalpost, and then there's this. We're asking him to jump over a box. We're not asking him to be an MLG no scoper pro. Imagine if this happened with a different scenario. Dude, you really suck. You can't even put on a band-aid? What? So what if I can't do put on a band-aid? What, do you expect me to be like a master surgeon or something? Okay, so this next part is really weird. He compares video games to film and sports. And I was going to make an apples to oranges argument, but then he kind of makes that argument himself. Plus, knowing about movies is not analogous to being good at video games. That's two different things. I really don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. I'm, I'm just going to skip it. But otherwise, still entirely context-dependent. Oh yeah, context. I completely forgot that even existed. Especially since the whole you have to know X amount to write about Y thing angle tends to be gatekeeping code for I want you to have my background so you're more likely to share my largely already decided on opinions. Or, hear me out, Maybe, just maybe, they want a guy with 25 years of experience to be a little bit better than an old person who never played a video game before. Oh, I killed him! Uh-oh, what is this? Kill it! Die! Kill that guy! What is so hard about getting that guy? And I've never had any time for that shit. In fact, these days, I tend to seek out criticism from people who don't share my background and or knowledge base because it's more interesting. Yeah, I find that extremely hard to believe. But if you want to prove me wrong, all you have to do is leave one little comment on this video, and I'll believe you. Uh, you know, the whole thing reminds me of when the comic book industry figured out it was easier to make super hardcore fanboys more loyal as customers by publishing stories you could only understand if you'd obsessively memorized every stupid scrap of continuity because it made them feel like having obsessively memorized every stupid scrap of continuity made them the real fans, as opposed to the publishers doing the work of figuring out what an expanded audience would actually look like and might want to purchase, but that's another show. Okay, the first thing I want to say isn't really a complaint, but Bob has this weird accent that pops in and out. It always really confused me. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just really curious about it. Like, is he doing it on purpose, or is it natural? And second, people were attacking a journalist. They weren't attacking the publishers of the game. So you can't really compare a video games journalist to a comic book publisher. So, are you still looking forward to Cuphead? Of course I'm still looking forward to Cuphead. Cuphead looks terrific, and it's certainly not the game or the developer's fault that the internet shit goblins decided that this was the video to use as this week's transparently fake excuse to beat up on the press. I love how he puts up a picture of a fat neck beard when he's talking about his opposition. Bob, have you looked in a mirror lately? So, yeah, Bob's video is pretty shit. But you probably want to know my opinion on Cuphead. Well, I thought it was a very fantastic game. I don't think it was as hard as everybody else said it was. Granted, I thought it was hard at first, but once you get the rhythm of the dodging down, it gets a lot easier. One thing that kind of destroyed the game for me was the shotgun power-up. 
once I got that, everything was a lot easier. The only real problem I had with the game was the second to last boss. He was very fun to fight, but he glitched a lot for me. But I thought the game was fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to the DLCs. My eyes have seen the glory of the cleansing of YouTube, debunking SJWs and feminazis too. We criticize reactionists in hopes they get the boot. Just the robot marches on.